In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent, 40 days ago until right now, we've prepared our hearts by prayer, penance, and charitable works. And this morning we gather together to herald with the whole church Palm Sunday, the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, his passion, death, and resurrection. For it was precisely to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, we commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of his cross, we may also share in his resurrection and life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these palm branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach that eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When a great crowd had come to the feast, the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. <clears throat> Jesus found an ass and sat upon it as it is written, fear no more, O daughter Zion, see your king comes, seated upon an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done this for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the crowds who accompany, like the crowds who accompany Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Please join in singing our opening hymn, which can be found in your hymnals. Hymn number 412, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the entire human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, 
though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading of the Passion begins on page 34 of the Missalette. The congregation is asked to participate in the parts marked Chorus. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 <clears throat> days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor will always have good things. And whenever you wish, you can do good for them. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, the whole world, what she has done, will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? 
he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large room, upper room, unfurnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples then went off entered the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one, surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen. I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. 
Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus' way to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer courtroom court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then... Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas, for them instead. 
Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the King of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At and at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on the reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who stood facing him, saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger, James, and of Joses, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, 
Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was, with him, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Early that Sunday morning, he had left Bethany, the home of Martha and Mary, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead, remember? And he walked. Jesus walked those two miles to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, they put him on a donkey, remember? And he traveled through Jerusalem to the acclaim of the crowd, Hosanna to the Son of David. He would spend a couple days that week we now call holy walking, walking through the temple precincts as preparations for the Passover were all in effect. He would walk on that Thursday to the upper room to celebrate his last supper with his apostles. And then they would journey to Gethsemane for the agony in the garden. There he'd be arrested. And the most epic walk of all, the way of the cross, the Via Crucis, would begin. Even on Easter Sunday, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves, one of his first apparitions would be walking on the road to Emmaus. This week we call holy, my brothers and sisters, we see Jesus on the move. He's a man with a mission. He has a vocation and a sacred responsibility to fulfill, given him by his Father, to suffer, die, rise from the dead for our salvation. A man on the move, journeying, walking. And that, that's the invitation of this week that we call holy, to walk with him. We just did. We walked up the aisle, dozens of us, with the newly blessed palms. Tomorrow, a lot of you are going to walk and slowly kind of uh, make your way through the line for the Sacrament of Penance as it's Reconciliation Monday in all the parishes here in the Archdiocese of New York. Uh, on Tuesday, we're going to walk again, carrying the oils, the oil of chrism, the oil of the sick, the oil of the catechumen up that middle aisle to be blessed and distributed to the parishes. Holy Thursday, guess what? We'll walk again, carrying the most blessed sacrament and procession to the altar of repose. And many of you will keep that custom of walking, processing to nearby churches to pray in silent adoration before the altar of repose. Good Friday, we'll do it again. We'll be walking up the aisle to venerate the wood of the cross. And on Holy Saturday, we'll walk up the aisle with the Paschal candle, uh, newly illuminated and blessed. And some of you will even walk in the Easter parade on Fifth Avenue a week from today. It's a week of journeying. It's a week of walking. It's a week on the move. And are we ever in good company? Because we do it with Jesus, who reminds us that we've come from God and we're on a journey called life back to him, to the everlasting life that he won for us on the cross. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> for Pope Francis our and our shepherd, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, for all clergy, religious, and laity, that they may be holy and effective in their mission to draw all people to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the culture of life flourish among all people of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations and for those suffering the effects of war, especially in Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be baptized and received into full communion with the church at the Easter Vigil, that they may be strengthened to live in fidelity to God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, that they may enjoy the fullness of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We seek the powerful intercession of our sorrowful Mother Mary at the foot of the cross. As we make our prayers through Christ our Lord,
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it, yet by this sacrifice made by him once for all on the cross, we may already feel the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for us sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save us the guilty. His death washed away our sins. His resurrection purchased our justification. With the angels and saints of heaven, we now praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my auxiliary bishops, and those of the province, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, the Apostles, all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing our communion hymn, which can be found in the blue St. Michael's hymnal. It's hymn number 679, O Sacred Head Surrounded.
Let us pray. Nourished with these most sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son on the cross, you've brought us hope, hope in what we believe, so by his resurrection, we prepare to celebrate Sunday. You may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Sorrows, there at the foot of the cross with Jesus, that first Good Friday, the intercession of St. Patrick, our patron, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. All the blessings of Holy Week, folks. We'll see you through the week and next Sunday, Easter. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, which can also be found in the Blue St. Michael's hymnal. Hymn number 614, Lift High the Cross. Mm -hmm. 